All right, from the last video, I was talking about the, the, the moment that the proto-sun, uh, also known as a proto-star, uh, becomes a, a full-fledged star. And so um, what, what happens there is um, the, the, the sun, and, and all the stars, from, uh, from, as a matter of fact, um, fuse hydrogen into helium. So the simplest element in the universe, which, by the way, is the most abundant element, that that's what the, the, the original solar nebula is made of, primarily hydrogen and, um, you know, like 90% hydrogen, 10% helium. And um, the hydrogen fuses and turns into helium. And that requires an incredible temperature. The, the, the center of the star, or the, well, the protostar, um, before it becomes a star, it has to heat up. And it heats up through gravitation, as, as all this material collapses into a smaller and smaller space, it heats up. It's got to get to like 10 million Kelvin. And when that happens, um, fusion takes place. And so what's, what's happening is hydrogen is turned into helium. And it release, when it does that, it releases energy. And that's, that's how stars shine. That's exactly what, what takes place. Um, another thing that happens is as, as this material um, orbits the you know the proto sun. Um, the, the, you'll you'll see you'll you'll see uh, small you know these small little what are called planetesimals. So so these are you know small like like asteroid sized things. You know like something the size of mountains clumping together. Um, and eventually there's there's um, collisions uh, that cause these things to really begin to grow. Um, and and uh, you know that you'll eventually form planets, um, and and it's, this is not this is no longer just a theory. Um, when we look into other solar systems, well, you know, newly forming solar systems, we can actually see these planetesimals forming. Um, you know, before if you go back, you know, fifty years ago, we we we, we just had theories about this. Um, now, of course, we can actually see it taking place using. Um, infrared telescopes and so forth, because you gotta you gotta peer through the through the uh, the gas and dust. But now we can do that using the infrared. All right, so the planetesimals begin to form, and um, they 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 can they will some of them will eventually form planets. Um, one of the, one of the ideas though that that's really important is um, there's lots and lots of collisions taking place. In fact, some theories um, have. Uh, when when you think about our our um, you know our solar system, that um, there were planet 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 size collisions um, in the early solar systems. That, that there were perhaps as many as you know anywhere from like fifty to to uh, you know or more um, planets in the in that that occupied uh, the, the the sun. Or you know, occupied the space around the sun, and you know, the, there were tremendous collisions that took place. And this, this is really early, in, you know, even during the the proto the proto star um, phase, um, that these these collisions took place. And and really, the the eight planets that we now have are the survivors. That that's that's a very um, you know that that that's the the, the modern theory of solar system formation that there's there was lots and lots of collisions in the early solar system um all right uh let's see which of the following orbit around the sun of course all of them right and and the then the sun is the center of our solar system so all these things um orbit around the sun um they travel in what are what are called elliptical orbits um they're kind of an off-centered circle uh, the planets travel almost in perfect circles, really close to being perfect circles. As a matter of fact, uh, it took a long time for us to figure out that they they traveled actually in ellipses. Um, the comets are very, very elliptical. They they travel in this big oval shape. Um, the asteroids are pretty, are, for most of them, the ones that orbit between Mars and Jupiter um, are relatively um, circular as well. Anyhow, um, so that's all of the above is the correct answer. Um, as the nebula shrinks under the influence of gravity, it spins faster, of course. Let's see. 
um, the sun. Um, it's, of course, the 92 million miles away. Um, and I know I don't usually talk about miles. Um, it's 150 million kilometers away um, is the distance between, that's the average distance between the Earth and the sun. Um, and, and the sun, the, like the, the Earth gets slightly closer to the sun, slightly farther uh, from the sun because, of course, it's in an elliptical orbit. Um, uh, the sun is composed mostly of hydrogen. Um, it, it's it's in a plasma state. So, you know, here, let's, we'll go over the, the states of matter, right? Um, you have solid, uh, so, the solid state of matter where the, the particles are really close together um, as, as the particles, uh, so I'm talking, this is, we're, we're getting to plasma, right? Um, when, when the, the temperature rises for a solid, um, that then, then, you know, it turns into a liquid. Um, and so the particles get further and further apart that make up the liquid. And then of course, if you heat it up even more, it turns into a gas. Um, and, and the particles are much, much further apart, um, Within the sun, the particles are so hot that um, the electrons uh, tend to leave leave the atoms of the, like you know remember the hydrogen just has one electron and so so the electrons tend to leave the the hydrogen atom because the their, the temperature is so great all right so that's 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 what's that's what uh, plasma is and plasma physics is is quite different than you know, everyday normal physics, um, plasmas act very, very differently under, you know, it's, it's a very extreme situation where you, you have really high, high temperatures. Um, all right. So anyhow, um, let's see. So, so, uh, uh, hydrogen is fused into helium. As I mentioned before, this is called thermonuclear fusion. Um, and it, the, the other thing that's really important about this is it only takes place at the core, at the center of, of, of our star. And, and that's true for all stars. The, the fusion process is only at the center because that's where it's hot enough. Um, for example, the center of our star is, uh, you know, is, is at 10 million Kelvin. Actually, it's a little bit more than that. Um, and, but, but the surface of our sun is um, 5,800 Kelvin. So, so 5,800 Kelvin. Um, so, so that, you know, that's quite a difference. Um, and, and the only place that fusion can occur is at the, at the center. You have to have at least 10 million Kelvin for, for fusion to take place. Right. Um, so one of the things, you know, wh where, where does this energy come from? So when hydrogen turns into helium, um, a little bit of mass is lost and that mass is converted into energy according to you know Einstein's famous equation E equals M C squared, um, and so every every um, second of every moment you know since since the sun has began began um, you know four and a half million tons of mass are lost. Now that sounds like a lot, and and it certainly is, but compared to what the mass of the sun is, the sun is is incredible incredibly massive like it's it's just it's it's almost it's almost inconceivable how much how much mass the sun has um so so that loss in, in one second is almost is, is in, it's insignificant um but over time you know it, you, you know it, as the, the sun has been around for four and a half billion years um we think that the sun will be around you know that, that this it can maintain this conversion of hydrogen into, into helium for another five billion years, right there. That's that's how much mass is there, All right? So a little bit of little bit of energy is lost and turned into light. Strictly speaking, um, each second that passes, the mass of the sun decreases, right? which is true. Uh, you know, it's not like it's noticeable. Um, and of course, it's the famous E equals MC squared. All right, um, the inner planets are the four nearest and they're composed of, of rocky material. They are much denser than the outer planets. Um, the density, uh, let me go over the densities real quick. Um, the density of Earth is about, so, so if, if I use grams per cubic centimeter, 
Um, the Earth is about 5.5. Mercury is the next one that's closest in, in density. I think it's uh, like 5.2. Um, Venus is very close to that. It's around 5. And then Mars, I think, is around... Um, it's between 4 and 3. Um, so, so just to give you a sense, like the average rock that you pick up on the surface of the Earth has a density of about three grams per cubic centimeter. Right. Um, you might recall the, the lab uh, you, that, that we did on, um, with, with basalt and, and granite, and we found that the density was around roughly three grams per, per cubic centimeter. All right, um, the orbital speed of the planets, uh, you know, well, Mercury is, it has the greatest orbital speed, and then it gets, goes down as you get further and further from the sun. And that is called, um, in, in fact, there was a guy about 400 years ago named Johannes Kepler, and Kepler actually figured out that um, there was a relationship between the distance that the planet is from the sun and the period. So, you know, Mercury takes the shortest. I mean, pe people knew that for thousands and thousands of years. I mean, you can see Mercury in the night sky and you can, you can figure out, you know, how long it takes Mercury to, um, to go around the sun, um, how long it takes Venus to go around the sun. Of course, the Earth, it takes one year. Mars, it's about a year and a half. And, and you know, uh, it keep, keeps increasing as you get further and further from the sun. But, but um, Kepler, uh, who, basically put um, numerical precision to, you know, comparing the distance that the planet is from the sun and its period. Right, so that, that's important. So M Mercury was the closest to the sun. Um, it's slightly larger than our moon. There is, there's absolutely no atmosphere whatsoever. In fact, the surface of it looks very much like, like the cratered surface of the moon. Um, it, it's, it's actually a weird... Uh, it has it has a, a daytime temperature so the day you know it, it it takes it it doesn't rotate in one in once in twenty four hours um, but when you know the the side that's facing the sun is it is at uh, four hundred and thirty uh, degrees Celsius so, so remember a hundred degrees Celsius is is the is the boiling point of water right so. Uh, you know, this is way above the boiling point of water. And then the, 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 the side that does not face, um, does, does not face the sun is, is sitting at, um, negative 170 degrees Celsius. So, so that's, you know, really, really cold. Um, you remember water freezes at, at zero degrees Celsius. Um, so anyhow, uh, so Mer Mercury takes a long, long time to, to, for it to spin around once, and in fact, um, it is it's it's kind of in what's what's called a um, a three two resonance. All right, so so what that means? Let's see if I get a picture. Here. No, um, so so what that means is um, for every for every three times um, Mercury goes around the sun, it spins around its own axis twice. So. You know, it it takes a long time for Mercury to spin. I mean, it, the the period of Mercury is is like it takes about ninety days, roughly ninety days to go. It, it roughly is three months for Mercury to go all the way around the sun. But it, it take you know so so for every three times Mercury goes around the sun, it's spun around on its own axis twice. So, so, you know, these days last a long, long time. The days, of course, are the, the, the portion of Mercury that is facing the sun, and the nights are a long time, too. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a pretty barren world. Um, it, in fact, there's a, there's a place on Mercury called the, uh, the Coloris Basin, just to let you know. Um, that uh, we, we've sent spacecraft, um, you know, that, that have, have orbited Mercury um, and given us uh, some incredible pictures of Mercury. And uh, this Caloris Basin looked, it, it is an incredible...